All right, guys. Well, here we are. We are. I am now going to do uh, part two uh, of the answers to the questions that you gave me. Um, same format as before. Um, I'll answer the questions in the order that I got them. And once again, if I mispronounce or totally botch your name when I try to say it, I do apologize in advance, okay? So let's get to it. All right. So the next question in the line here was by um, Daisha Pollard. I believe that's how you say her name. And I believe it's her. And um, it says... Um, Hey, I'm a fan of traffic lights, but I have one like that, but bigger, and those types of visors. So mine is green, like the outside, and LED. But I have, <clears throat> but I have like these three buttons to press. If I want, if I want green on, I press it. But I have a real one like that, but bigger too. All right, so I'm assuming you're saying that, that you have um, you have the 12 inch one because um, that's the larger one. The one behind me is the is the 8 inch one, um, so that's why it's a little bit smaller. But that's cool, and you have an LED one, as you say. Um, that must be pretty bright. Those things are really bright when they're when you see them on the road. Um, I, I do know what you're talking about, though. I have seen um, traffic lights on um, a website called um, TrafficLights.com, and they pretty much have. Um, uh, like many different traffic lights, and they have the kind that you can either use a switch or a button to um, to change the kind of light you want. But that's cool. I mean, it's cool that you have one like that, and I hope it's um, kind of enjoyable to have. Okay, um, we have a question here by Tiny Budgie, but I'm going to attach that to, uh, to to the question after this, because they kind of, once again, are going to get a similar, if not the same answer. So, um, <clears throat> there we go. Excuse me there. Um, the next question is from Harley Badger. What's up, man? Um, what is your opinion on the pros versus cons of incandescent versus LED signal heads? Okay, that's a good one. Well, one of the reasons why I like the incandescent ones a lot is, you know, because I grew up with it, so to say, and, you know, they were around for even years before I was born. So, uh, you know, um, you, you kind of, like, get to know them, appreciate them for a while. At least I do. I'm just speaking from my personal experience. Um, you, you get a chance to appreciate them, kind of like them for a while. Then when they get changed after being a certain way for so long, it's kind of weird. Now, um, <clears throat> you know, the um, one of the pros of the incandescent is that, you know, um, it's a simple light bulb. You know, if, if, if for the most part, unless something goes wrong with the socket, if something goes wrong, you know, take the old bulb out, old, old bulb out excuse me, put the new one in, and you're all set, good to go. Um, now, of course, the immediate con of the incandescent light is that it uses more electricity than the, the LED bulb does. Um, <clears throat> now, um, the LED does does use a lot less electricity, um, and they also don't give off heat. Um, in a way, um, that's a pro, but it can also be a con. And the reason why I say that is because um, there was a state, um, I think it was Rhode Island, but don't quote me on that. I think it was that um, where they tried to... Put, switch over to LED signals, but the problem was was that when they would get a lot of snow or ice, since the LEDs don't give off heat, um, the lights would freeze over and you couldn't see anything. So for a while, they went back to incandescent until they um, solved the problem. I don't know if they ever did or if they went back, whatever, but I heard about that. Like I said, it may have been that state where they tried to put LEDs on, but when the winters came and then the lights froze over, there was no heat to melt the ice, so then that happened. So there you go. Um, now, one of the things I always considered about LEDs, one of the drawbacks is it saves electricity, but are there any catches to that? And the reason why I say it is because um, the, the state sets around here started switching over to LEDs, I think, right around the turn of the uh, m millennium. It might have been around that time, but it was very close to it. Definitely before or right at it, okay? And the immediate problem, now th th what I'm about to say here is more of a personal opinion, but... Um, when the LED lights first came out, um, the yellow was kept incandescent because, you know, it's on for such a short time, they probably weren't concerned with electricity usage, and it was probably also cheaper in a way to, to do them. Um, but the red and the green, you know, there were these bead LEDs. Like, you know, like, how, you know, like how you typically see a speaker on the ceiling in a commercial building? It's like, you know, it's a circle with the holes in the middle with a certain pattern. That was the kind of pattern that the LED signals first had, and I hated them. I thought they looked horrible. Like, the design was just, like, just, just didn't look good. It was, like, a huge hassle. And the biggest downside to those um, individual bead LEDs were if they were on for a long time, like, you know how you have a lot of signals now that won't change unless there's cars waiting and some of them stay on for a long time? Those LED, those LED beads themselves 
selves themselves started to fail, okay? And it's like half the beads would work, half of them wouldn't. It just looked horrible. And usually the light that was on the longest, like, you know, green for the main roads, red for the side roads, those beads would start to eventually fail, and then you had to replace it. And, of course, replacing that whole LED fixture was a lot more money than replacing an incandescent light bulb. So that's where there's kind of a catch there. Now, um, in 2007 or 2008, one of those years, um, there was a county set not too far from here that was changed over to a state set. And um, when that went up, the incandescent, the, the yellows were still incandescent. But um, I had noticed that the, the red, the green, and especially the arrows had looked like an incandescent lens again. I was like... Wait, did they go back to incandescent light bulbs? Because it was like it was it looked totally just like an incandescent bulb. But no, they didn't. Ever since then, they've been slowly getting rid of those individual LED lights and replacing it with um, with these whole lens lights that looks more like an incandescent light bulb. And to be honest, in my opinion, those are pretty good because um, I haven't seen one of those fail yet. Take that set for example I just talked about. That set's been up there since, like I said, 07 or 08. I can't remember exa the exact year. But, um, like I said, it's been up there for that many years, not one of those bulbs has ever gone out. So, I mean, in a way, that could be a good cost saver. You get something that uses less and actually lasts longer. Because if it uses less electricity, but you got to change it every as often as an incandescent bulb, then you're not saving any money because you got to pay a lot more to replace it because it costs a lot more money. So, there's the pros and cons for you. Um, I can say, though, that the incandescent lights around here that we still have, like, again, a lot of county sets and state sets are still incandescent. They didn't really change them unless they replaced the whole set. A, a few sets here and there have been retrofitted, but for the most part, a lot of county and, and town sets are still um, incandescent. So, um, they really keep them that way until they, until they change them for the most part. Now... That's one of the things I like about the span sets is because since the lights can move around and things like that, any vibrations the span cable should absorb since it can move. And, you know, um, the last time um, a light was replaced on our county set, I think by, by where I live, um, it, was a, it was replaced twice, I think, last year. But before then, it was like years before another one of those incandescent light bulbs went out. So, I mean... Um, either they're really built better than, you know, like people think, or maybe like, again, maybe the spans absorb vibration and it makes it easier on the filament than the light. Because like I said, those lights have been lasting a very long time, so it's pretty impressive. Um, as far as I know, I think I answered all your, um, all your, um, pros and cons. I will say that, you know, nowadays when a set goes up, it's all LED. It's all lens LED, including the yellow. Um, the yellow, um, LED is, um, the yellow is now LED, as I was meant to say. Um... One of the issues I have with LEDs, let me just put this in here, is that um, for the most part, a lot of the lights don't have colored lenses, okay? Like, um, around here at least, the red is always colored, I'm assuming because maybe it's the most important light. But a lot of times, the yellow and the green aren't colored. And what I mean by that is, when it's on, it shows green or yellow. But when it's off, you see this colorless, grayish lens. And I'm not really a big fan of that. I like when some sets around here do actually have all three lights are colored, even when they're off. And I really like that design. Some do, some don't. But, you know, I'll live. Just, just a personal opinion again. But there you go. Hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay. Um, this next one... Okay, this question I'm going to attach to with Tiny Budgie... Uh, and Tiny Budgie had asked me, um, what do you think of front loaders? And Donald Sheetsky, I think that's how you say your name, um, have you used a front loader before, and what do you think is the best one? Okay. In the residential area, um, front loaders, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, I do not like them. I do not like them at all, okay? I don't think they wash very well at all, okay? Case in point, um, when I was back over in school in Pennsylvania, okay, I had to use this this front loader uh, Maytag Atlantis and no I'm sorry uh, Maytag Neptune and you know for all the years I was there and I hated it the the thing just it did not wash well it just it kept doing this and that you know what I'm saying it had bearing problems big surprise there and you know it did not wash well as well as the direct drive does or the other top loading machines I used in the past okay they just do not wash well as well as the top loading machines do from what i've seen and i'm not the only one to say that um i'll tell you this okay they always um talk about water usage with those machines right but think of this um i remember correctly when i was there 
The machine would do a pre-wash, for whatever reason, drain the water, do the main wash, okay? And then, from what I can understand, it did no fewer than four rinses. Four rinses, okay? You know, why does the machine have to do four rinses? Okay, I mean, they're saying it uses less water, but again, what's the catch? Because, you know, if you're doing four rinses, either you're not saving much water at all, or the amount of water you're using is completely insufficient for your clothing. And you're just doing that to cover your tracks of how bad your machine is. Because, like I said, four rinses that machine would do. And it was unbelievable. I don't remember the exact time of how long it ran, to be honest. But um, it was definitely longer than the, than the direct drive and the speed queens I've used have run. So, I mean... Again, I don't know what they were thinking, but that machine was just a total piece of crap. And in the residential area, all I'm hearing from a ton of people are that they don't wash well, they break down. There's my opinions, okay? That being said, um, I've used commercial machines in laundromats. I've used them. Um, I th um, they sound about the same, so I'm wondering if they're like the same brand but just rebadged or something. Because um, the ones I've used in the laundromats are um, Speed Queen and uh, what's it? Dexter is the is the uh, machine that I've used. Now, we use those machines every now and then to wash our bed comforters because, as you know, the comforters we have they're way too large to fit to fit into the, uh, the direct drive. Okay, they just it can't handle that, that, uh, a comforter that size. But we bring them to the laundromat and. Those machines are, like, completely different, okay? They use a good amount of water. You know, they really have a lot of water to go through the fabric. I won't say clothing because we don't use clothing there. Through the fabric of the blankets, okay? And um, it does anywhere from two to three rinses, okay? It's more than a top loader, of course, but it's a lot less than those Maytag Neptunes did. That's for sure. And, um... Those I've had great experience with. We run a blanket, a comforter through there. It comes out looking nice and clean, brand new. So the ones in the commercial area, I find wash a lot better than the ones in the residential area. So there you go. Commercial ones are pretty good. Residential ones, not so much. Okay? Now let's see. Um, this one is from the brand man. Let me just uh, get a drink here quickly. Okay. Um... And the brand man asks me, were you able to convince your parents to allow you to keep the Whirlpool direct drives from your current house? No, that's not happening, unfortunately. Um, I had mentioned in my 2017 video that um, the, the the house in Connecticut has um, has the has the Speed Queens very similar to the ones that Spats Baron or Holly Badger have, uh, but they're the top of the line models. Again, sometime in the future I'll make a video on those. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But I mean, it's the best you can get today. Anything else? No, it's bad. So really, it's the best ones you can get. Again, I'm trying to see if I can plan something with these with these current ones. I I gotta do it, you know, when I can. But I've just been so busy with house stuff and schoolwork and everything. So you know, I'll try to do what I can. All right. Now, <clears throat> this next one comes from. Uh, let me just move this over here. Okay. Next one comes from Jason Hernandez, and he says, "I've heard." I've heard some say that any clothes dryer is responsible for excess wear and tear on clothing and that clothes need to be hang dried. Their claims are that it's not good for clothes to be regularly exposed to lots of heat and all that lint you have to clean out is proof that your clothes should avoid the dryer. Do you think that do you think it's the dryers or it is just misuse of the dryer? If it if um oh if it's a misuse, can you do a video on how dryers are not responsible for wear and tear on clothing? I know you said in your video that the old washers don't damage clothes. I do believe clothes dryers cause little wear and tear, so I want to know if I need to use the dryer better so that clothes will survive the dryer. Alright, I mean, any article of clothing you have will have a tag on it that says about drying it or not. Now, um, at least what I do is, when it comes to using the dryer, everyday clothing I want, uh, I wash, everyday clothing I dry in on medium heat. Towels I do on high heat, and bed sheets I tend to do on low heat. Now, you know, dryers can cause damage if you if just like a direct drive, if you use them incorrectly. Okay, like you know, if 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 some tag says you know um like you know dry on extra low or delicate heat, and then you throw it in there on high, and then the clothing gets damaged. Yeah, I mean that's user error more than anything because you didn't follow what the manufacturer said for the or designer whatever you said for the clothing okay 
But like I said, I've used dryers now for as long as I've been doing laundry. And, you know, uh, like one of these shirts is, is more than a few years old. And a lot of the other shirts I wear is more than a few years old. They're still in one piece. You know what I'm saying? Again, like a rule I like to follow, like I said again, was, you know, for everyday clothing, whether it be like, you know, um, pants, shirts, socks, um, you know, boxer shorts, things like that, medium heat. And then towels, high heat. And like I said, bed sheets, I usually do on low heat. And again, I've been doing that now for X amount of years. And everything's still one piece. Everything's all together. And it works great. If you're really unsure, just check the tag. Because the tag will say whether um, how you should wash or dry the clothing. And then there you go. So yeah, dryers can damage clothing by misuse. It's definitely possible. But, you know, if you do it correctly, I don't think dryers are going to cause that much damage at all. Like I said, a lot of these shirts I've had now for more than a few years. And they're still doing fine. So really it comes down to using them correctly. Um, and, you know, another thing to consider is... You can hang dry your clothing, okay? But let's say you do it in April or May. Do you know how much pollen your clothing is going to get onto it, okay? I myself have problems with allergies in the spring, okay? So hang drying clothing in April or May, not a good idea. <laughs> definitely, definitely not a good idea, especially for me. So in the end, I think dryers are the best thing to do. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, we have another one here that says, um, this may sound strange, but can you make a video of your sump pump running, like if it's during a heavy rain or snow melt? Uh, I'm not going to do that, only because the reason is not much happens with it when it rains, which, um, you know, um, we, we, re we read that the piping so the water wouldn't have to come through the foundation wall uh, to get in, so really not much happens with the sump pump itself, so I'm probably just going to skip that. But even then, you know, it's really... a nothing significant happening like i don't know if you've seen um oh this is by washer boy 2016 sorry about that washer boy 2016 answer that question ask that question sorry um you know jay jay has that sump bucket that his washers and sinks and um dishwasher and ac condensate drain into and that's definitely more of an event than the sump pump we have so the only reason why i'm not really going to do that is because um is because, like I said, it's really non-eventful, so not much to see it, okay? But, um, sorry about that, but hopefully you won't be too disappointed. Now, um, there is one question I did miss last time I did these videos, and it was from Edwin Johnston from last time, and he had said, um, what was that? He says, what size water line is your main line? Um, in the basement, by the main water valve and also the water heater, uh, the pipe is uh, uh, three quarters of an inch in the, the diameter. Um, from the water uh, from the water meter itself, which is outside on the front lawn, I'm not sure, but I mean, f I'm pretty sure it's still three quarters of an inch. So um, for the most, and some parts of the house, um, the pipes are reduced to half an inch, like you know, probably for like you know the sinks, the toilets, things like that, the showers. But um, for the most part, the piping in this house is three quarters of an inch. Okay, so there you go. And I do have a couple of questions that I will look at from the previous video that people asked me since then. Let's have a look. Um, this one comes from Random Videos 242. Do you think Speed Queen top load washers are better than Whirlpool direct drive washers? I don't know. I haven't used. I really haven't used the Speed Queen long enough um, to really <clears throat> give a good comparison um, as to how they wash. Um, I will say this, though, um, back in 2010, before my brother had gotten those whirlpools where he used to live, um, I used a Speed Queen top loader in a laundromat, and that thing did an amazing job. The clothes came out, like, you know, beautiful, like, you know, all nice and clean, looked great, so I can tell you that they do a great job in washing. Are they better than the Whirlpool Direct Drive? I don't know, because that was, those machines have cleaned my stuff beautifully over all, over all these years. So, I mean, um, are Speed Queens bad machines? Not by a long shot, anything but. But are they as good as direct drives? I don't know, because direct drives have really cleaned everything really, really well, including whites. So, um, if they can do just as good, then I'll be happy. But to be better? I don't know. I think it's kind of hard to beat. <laughs> but we shall see. Hey. Um, we have another long one here by uh, by Siamese Catman or Christopher Shriver, and I'll just get to his question part. Um, 
He said, I've been subscribed to you and have seen some of your videos, so can you subscribe to me and check out some of my videos and comment them as comment on them as well, please? Already been done, man. I um I I, I, I subscribed to you earlier today. <clears throat> so um you should see me on there. So there you go. And um the one question he had was um was the main tag performer your brother had made by Norge? Um I'm going to assume it was. And like I said, it was built very similar to um, the Maytag washer that Emerson Collie has. The only differences that I know right off the bat are um, it had a stainless steel tub and it had more uh, temperature selections, like it had a warm rinse and things like that. Um, what was really nice was it had, you know, the auto temperature control, but it was much better than what you see today when you hear that term, okay? Because back then, let's say, for example, I use warm wash, warm wash, warm rinse, okay? The warm wash was auto temperature controlled, and what that means is the washer would in it would fill initially with just the hot water up, with just the hot water valve open, so it could come up to temperature faster. And then as soon as it sensed it was up to temperature, it then opened the cold water valve, so you got warm water, and they stayed open the entire time it filled. That's how you should do auto temperature control. And then the warm rinse was just both are open um, all the time. There's no auto temperature control on that, okay? That's how it should be. It shouldn't be this, like, you know, whole, like, you know, make warm water cool and make hot water warm. It doesn't make any sense, you know? And people have really gotten annoyed about that over the years. So that was a good feature it had. The only thing it didn't have that Emerson Collies does, it didn't have that little finger faucet switch, which, which I think is a really cool thing. When I saw that, I was back in 07 when I first saw his video, I was like, oh man, if only we had, if only his machine had that option. That looks really cool. But um, aside from that, I think it was made by them, and um, he moved out of that house in 2010, so I really don't know what it's been doing since then, or even if it's still there, so who knows. <laughs> um, okay, the final question is from Freedom Tower Productions. So and um, hey buddy, he, he he asks, hey buddy, remember me? I sure do. He says, I see you're above a thousand subs. Congrats! Thanks a lot. Really nice that I was able to reach that amount. It's quite an accomplishment. I do appreciate that. Thank you. And he says, um, what type of light is that behind you? Also, what part of Long Island are you on? I'm coming out to LI in April to film the LARR. Would love to meet you. Uh, well, that's nice. Um, the light behind me is Kraus Heinz, I think that's how you say it. Um, on, my, on the video I first made about this um, light back in 2012, um, I think the logo on the back says CH or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, so I think it's a Kraus, I think it's a Kraus Heinz light, if that's, if, that's, if that's what you're looking for. And um, he asked me, what type of Long, what, what part of Long Island are you on? Um, I'll send you a private message on that because, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to just say in a public video on the internet where exactly I am, so I'll, I'll, let you, I'll probably message you about that and see what happens from there. Um, so you're coming out to here in April, you said. Um, all things considered, I should still be here before the move. Um, I can't guarantee it, but there's a good chance I will be. But we'll see what happens, okay? I'll probably message you, and we'll see what goes from there, okay? All right, guys, and that's all your questions. Um, this really was a lot of fun. I got, like I said, I got a lot more questions than I thought I was going to get, and um, I really do appreciate it. it. Really made the whole video a lot of fun. Um, and again, like uh, it was really a new event for me, and um, just to hear all of you personally ask me stuff and able to answer for you, I hope it was also a good experience for you as well. Okay, this really was a good time, and I enjoyed answering all the questions you asked me. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope you keep watching this channel. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and take care.